Indeed, research shows that what matters most to women, even to those who are economically independent, is knowing they have a man whom they can rely. It's the feeling of being safe and in good hands. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with an article. Guys, I saw this article. Man, oh man. Some women, some are regretting the decisions and why they listen to feminists and things like that. Ugh. Guys, uh, like usual, um, there will be a story tonight at 8.30. Make sure you come back for that at 8.30. Um, if you guys want to check out this article here, you can just uh, put in this title here and it should pop right up. But with that being said, you guys read the title. Let's just get into it. So four feminist lies that are making women miserable. Updated. 20 years ago, I wrote my first book about why women can't have it all or at least all at once, despite what the culture tells them. At the time, the so-called mommy wars were raging. Women everywhere who'd been sold a bill of goods by their feminist mothers and mentors, lamenting the futility of being able to successfully work full time outside the home while maintaining a healthy marriage and family life. Or they were defending their choice to work full time by insisting children do fine in round the clock substitute care. Number one, women don't need men. Over time, as women began to make their own money and take advantage of the birth control pill, they came to believe that women don't, in fact, need men. They were wrong. Biologically, women are wired to depend on men. Most women still want to be mothers, and when they do, they become vulnerable. Even today, women know instinctively that they will ultimately need a man if they want to have a family and if they want the option of being home at all if only for a period of time. Indeed, research shows that what matters most to women, even to those who are economically independent, is knowing they have a man whom they can rely. It's the feeling of being safe and in good hands. Yes, even financially, that matters most. That is what's known as hypergamy. Number two, men and women are the same, or gender is a social construct. The precise moment in history when the relationship between the sexes took a nosedive is when women began to have sex like a man, casually, with no strings attached, under the guise that women are no different from men and are just us as capable of having casual sex. From college campuses to our nation's boardrooms, many women today have learned to pursue sex the way men often do, no commitment necessary, and they are getting burned. Number three, the biological clock isn't real. <laughs> wow, they've said that. The biological clock may be politically inconvenient, but that doesn't make it any less real. The ideal age for a woman to get pregnant is 25. Because of this, it stands to reason that men can postpone marriage longer than women can. But we don't tell women this. Instead, we pretend they can map out their lives with careers at the center, as men do, as though as though they won't hit a point in which their ability to conceive will invariably clash with a career. We lie to women in other words, and in doing so, feminists get what they want, for women to reject maternal desire and to instead produce in the marketplace. But every day, women do not. Number four, a career is more meaningful than marriage and children. Of all the lies feminists tell, the idea that career success is more fulfilling than marriage and family is by far the greatest. It is almost impossible to convey the depth of this lie, for it too began in the 1960s. Since that time, American women have been walloped with a steady diet of words and images that drive that argument home. Mm, mm, mm. Let me get my thoughts on this. Wow. So... I can tell you, man, and I've actually seen videos. I've seen people do stories on YouTube. Well, not stories. They were uh, reacting to um, uh, TikTok videos and uh, other YouTube videos and things like that. And there's women complaining, saying, oh, we were lied to. You know, uh, we pursued 
careers and focused on careers and wanted to be CEOs and bosses and I don't need a man and look man there are women who actually do very well financially you know have their master's degrees their PhDs they got nice cars they got a beautiful home but they're lonely they're lonely they'll smile in public and I'm so happy being single but they're crying behind closed doors I specifically know one for sure who does very, very well. And she, I'm, I'm talking about very, very well. And she says that she wants somebody to take care of her. She wants a man that can take care of her. She doesn't want, she doesn't want to do it anymore. She doesn't want to work anymore. As much money as she makes. As, you know, pretty much she can have whatever she wants to have. She doesn't want it. She wants to be a wife. She wants to stay at home and raise kids. And a lot of women got messed up, man, listening to these these uh, these lies that were told to them. They got they got messed up, man, and they're lonely. And they're gonna be in a house full of cats in their fifties and sixties. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Like I said, I'll be back at eight thirty tonight. Make sure you come back for that, and I will catch you guys later.